Okay, students, so in this video, let's continue to look at what makes up uh, some of our existing blueprints, and then we're going to add a couple of variables to it, as well as make a default HUD. So uh, we have here still the twin stick pawn, which I mentioned, again, is made by Unreal and has excellent uh, comments here that tell us sort of exactly what's happening. Uh, as well as if we look on the left here, it has a couple of uh, custom functions. So right now, you notice it gets the fire forward and fire right direction, makes a vector, and then fires a shot. And if we look at that fire shot by double-clicking here, this is the fire shot code. So you can see here, when fire shot happens, it checks to see if I'm able to fire with a can fire boolean. Uh, and then it spawns a projectile in a space, and it spawns this specific projectile uh, in this direction. And then it plays a sound, and then it sets a timer to set uh, with a speed of fire rate here is how quickly it can shoot again. So these are all variables that we can play with. And if we look on the left here, we can see there's audio variable for what our fire sound is. There's a mesh variable for a ship component. We have our different camera boom, which is the arm the camera's attached to that makes it touch the, cam uh, the, the ship, as well as some gameplay variables here, including movement speed float, gun offset vector, a fire rate float, and a can fire boolean. So you can imagine in the future we can make power-ups that affect our fire rate or that can add uh, additional twin projectiles being spawned or potentially even uh, can change sounds or other things. So looking here in our event graph, uh, the well, the first thing I want to do actually is just to create a couple extra variables. So uh, on the left here, I'm going to create a new variable, and I'm going to call it, um, I'm going to call it player health. As much as it's health, and it'll always be related to our twin stick pawn, I like to, we're going to have health in a lot of the enemies and such, so I like to make it absolutely clear uh, which variable I'm talking about. And I'm going to, once I compile, set my default value here on the right side to 100. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and add another variable, and I'm going to call this, again, player score. Um, because as you'll see in a bit, we will have score in the enemies as a variable too. I'm going to compile this, and its default to zero is good for me. Now, if you really want to be clean, you can drag these up inside your little gameplay folder here. So now these are sort of, just for organizational purposes, categorized as our gameplay. Also, while we are here, I'm going to bring to your attention the fact that so pretty much everything in our player happens on tick, and it has a sequence of things it does. It does movement, and then it checks and, and does shooting. You can click this Add Pin button and have it do more things. And all I'm going to have it do right now is uh, have a branch. And this branch is going to check whether or not we're dead. Um, so we would do this with the player health, which I'm just going to drag in here with get player health. And I can drag out of here and make a comparison directly with the math. I don't always have to um, do like a compare int or something. I can just say less than or equal to, which gives me this less than or equal to note. And so this is saying, hey, if the player health is less than or equal to zero, this will fire condition. And so if it is true, we're dead. Now, I would like to make a complicated death animation eventually, but for right now, I'm just going to put a print string and we'll make it say, you're dead. Um, just so I can keep track of these things, we will program something more final later. Now, to go ahead and make a HUD, I'm going to uh, add a folder, uh, and not there, but in my main content folder, I'm going to add a folder, and I'm just going to call it Blueprint. That's where I'm going to put most of my blueprints. And because I like to be as organized as possible, especially at the beginning when we're just starting, I'm going to make a folder called HUD. 
And this is where I'm going to put all of my HUD blueprints. So right clicking, I want blueprint, uh, actually user interface, excuse me, and I want a widget blueprint. And I'm going to call this one uh, default HUD. Because this is going to be what we see normally. Maybe there are other modes. Maybe later there are power-ups that pop up or all sorts of stuff. But this thing will work fine for default HUD. So I'm going to double click, and it opens our widget uh, blueprint editor here. And we're going to be as simple as possible. In the future, we may come back and make it like a health bar or a score bar or have the score give us power-ups when it gets to certain places. But for right now, I'm going to stay really simple and just use text. So I'm going to drag out a text block. I will, though, consider uh, looking at the font because by default, Unreal has just the Roboto font. Now, what you could do is you could go to uh, your C drive on the computer and head to Windows and then go into the Fonts folder. And you can choose any font on your computer that you like and then copy it from here to your Unreal folder. But I also have for you in our Assets folder a new folder called Fonts that has a bunch of gamey gamified fonts here, which you can see some of them are pixelated, some of them aren't, but they're sort of gamey fonts. I'm going to use this first one here, 8-Bit um, Wonder, and I'm going to just drag it into my HUD folder. It's going to ask if I want to create a new font asset. I'm going to say yes, and then now I can come in here and instead choose 8-Bit Wonder as my font and have it be score And it looks like the uh, colon is not usable in 8-Bit Wonder. Let's see a dash. Is that good? No? OK. Just score, we'll say, with it stuck to the upper corner. Maybe up my size here to like 36. Maybe even a bit more. Let's do like 44. That's good. Uh, I'm going to right click here on the score and duplicate it, move it over so it lines up. And I'm going to edit my text here so that this says like placeholder. I don't like to put numbers here um, because then if my bindings don't work, I just see a number and think that it might be working. So I really like to, um, to make sure it is not a number. And this feels kind of long. I don't think my score is going to have like nine. So maybe I just do like A, B, C, D, F. And that works for me there. I'm going to move the score over. And I'm going to change the anchor to being this side, which you can do by just clicking here. And then I'm going to uh, take these guys and duplicate them again to make my health ones. And you are welcome to spend time here or later to uh, play with the color, to you know change your fonts around, make my health be red. Um, whatever you want to do. And if you want to make sure to like line stuff up, you can also see here I have my position is 2436. If we look here, position X changed, but it's 28. So if I want these to be at exactly the same height, this should be uh, 26 like the other one is, or 36. Let's see what it says. This one is 36 for Y. So I want this one to be 36 for Y. To try to line them up. I'm going to duplicate my health one again here. And I'm going to put A, B, C, D for health. Because like I said, you want to see that it's working and that it's actually grabbing from your uh, code, from your, um, from your variables. So this one here, our A, B, C, D, we're going to click bind and create a binding. 
I'm going to, uh, it says it's called get text. So I'm going to select this guy and call it get health. And what we need to do is we need to cast to twin stick pawn, because that's the name of our blueprint. And it's important here, we can't cast to the player character because it's not a character. So instead, we get player pawn because our character here is a pawn. And as the twin sticks pawn, we're going to get health, which gives us the player health. And that is the value that we're going to return as it gets converted to text. Clicking back to our designer mode, I'm going to click my A, B, C, D, F here and bind this text. This get text, I'm going to call get score. And then once again, I'm going to cast to twin stick pawn. I'm going to get player pawn. And then I'm going to get score, which gives me the player score. And it's going to put it in here, turning it into an integer. Lastly, we will go back into our twin stick pawn. I'm going to choose a spot farther down here. And I'm going to go ahead and make a begin play, which we don't have one of yet. And in begin play, I am going to create a widget, W-I-D-G-E-T. And that's the default HUD. Here, we're going to get player controller. the owning player. And then I'm going to add to viewport. And if you want to get really fancy and have it match here, you can select this whole bit and right click and choose create comment from selection. And in here type, uh, instead of comment, we would type uh, default HUD setup or something like that. Let's see here. Default HUD setup. So now it is labeled correctly in case anyone ever comes into our project and they know what's happening down here. Saving and compiling everything. And if we hit play, we can see we have health and score. And notice they have changed uh, to the numbers instead of uh, being the ABCDF that they started as. Okay, in our next video, we're going to look at making a base enemy the simplest form of enemy and how we can affect that uh, from there.